Hello everyone, uh, I just wanted to show you in this video uh, how good the tracking generator of this analyzer is. So I'm talking about the RIGO real-time tracking analyzer, is model RSA uh, 3015N, um, is the RSA uh, 3000 series, but it applies to the RSA 5000 series as well. Uh, since the only difference between the two is the vector signal analyzer that's present only in the 5000 series. Uh, all right, so um, let me show you something real quick. Um, I'll just measure some filters for you in the beginning. But the real deal is that uh, this tracking generator could be used very well as a CW generator with a very clean uh, signal. Uh, by very clean, I mean uh, a stupendous harmonic purity for a tracking generator. I've never seen that in an, in an analyzer, like embedded in the analyzer like this. I've never seen such harmonic purity um, in a tracking gen, right? Uh, we've seen that at, on um, special purpose generators, uh, standalone generators, uh, all those separate generators, right? But uh, for sweep generators, like tracking generators, I've never seen uh, such a good harmonic period. All right, so first things first, uh, let me uh, give you a little uh, tip uh, to do a simple trick here um, to make the trace uh, smoother when you're measuring filters. So um, before activating the TG, you go into the menu on uh, the trace menu and uh, put the trace to average, right? And uh, you come here in measurements, actually measurement setup, and set the average number at least to 10. You could set it to a higher number, uh, it's, it's not a problem. Um, or you could actually change from logs to RMS. That is also not a problem, uh, it's up to you. Uh, the thing is, put a number here to smooth the line, right? And after that, turn on the TG. Actually, it's already on. Um, and normalize the curve. So usually, depending on the linearity of your circuit, you'll be willing to use the minus 40 dBm um, level. However, if you don't care about linearity at all, if it's a passive, you could just increase the power as you wish. I'm going to use minus 40 anyway for this, and then I'll normalize the curve. Normalize on, there we go. As you turn on average, you have to wait for the average to complete, right? to get a good normalized uh, trace. Once you've done that, now I could start plugging some filters. So I've prepared some filters that I've done on my own. Um, I use these filters for the Arduino RF generator that I've built in the channel. Just look for, okay, it's in Portuguese, Brazilian, but uh, you could turn on automatic translations and get the English uh, subtitles. So I uh, just search on the channel for Arduino generator RF generator, um, and you'll see. So uh, let me do this with two hands. Yep, that's the recommended way of plugging in the filter. And there you go. Have a very smooth uh, filter. This is a ChapChef uh, filter. I'm not going to go into the 3DB and all those stuff. Just to show you that the generator works. That's the purpose uh, of this video. So I'll just put another, let's see another filter here. Uh, just make sure uh, it's working all right. Let's get another one. Let's see this one. Oops. So if it's connected. Oh, uh, well, okay. The 3DB of this one is actually in the limit of the analyzer. Almost one and a half gig. So let me put another one. We want to see a very nice 3DB cutoff frequency on this video, so okay, this one. All right, there we go. We've got another one with a good uh, low frequency cutoff. Okay, so there you go. You smooth your uh, trace for measuring filters. Okay, so let's go to the main point. So it works fine, the tracking gen, although this model specifically has a VNA available. So if I wanted to, I could go directly into the VNA mode and measure uh, S parameters. It's not the point of this video though. Um, so I'm going to turn off the, the normalization. I'm going to turn off the generator uh, and put the trace back to clear, clear right. So it's live again. 
uh, the span I'm going now to zero span because when you're going to produce say, output ACW uh, you'll be willing to use zero span right you want the CW in a single frequency okay uh, if you use the generator of the VNA mode on the same instrument the same instruments um, you see that VNA mode does not allow you um, to put the sweep in a single frequency even if you put the, the, the start frequency to the same frequency as the end frequency, um, you will have a small gap that won't allow you to have full control of the tracking gen in VNA mode. Although it works, you see that it works. I'm not going to show you in VNA mode because it's not a point here. Um, I just want to show you tracking gen at its best, which is full control in normal mode when you're in general purpose analyzer. So by the way, we are not in real time. We are in general purpose analyzer uh, mode, okay? So let me just connect real quick this cable to another spectral analyzer to show you the harmonic purity of this beast. This was quite unexpected. I don't know if anyone had uh, measured this, has measured this. Let me just show you um, the connection here. So here is my Tektronix RSA um, 306B, okay? And I'm going to change the camera to that screen there. So um, let me change the camera and I'll get back to this video. All right, uh, so now you see my other spectrum analyzer, um, which has a 6.2 gigahertz of bandwidth. Um, the Rigol's model I've got here is only up to one and a half gigahertz. So this will be plenty of bandwidth for us to see the harmonic purity of the tracking gen. Um, so I'm going to take the camera to show you the configurations I'm using for the tracking gen. So of course, uh, for our purposes now as a CW, I'm going to put that into zero dBm, just um, to show you a higher harmonics so that I don't need to decrease too much the RBW of the second one um, to show you the signal, the harmonics. So that's all there is to it. I'll just hit the output on select it now it's on and guess what we got a small problem here and I'm about to tell you how what's the trick to make it uh, stop um, with this uh, intermittent behavior so when you start your analyzer and you start the tracking gen and you start zero span all the things I've told you before and then you look at these and you're like oh this is a very bad tracking gen no because that is only happening um, due to the sweep time that is selected. So sweep time is one millisecond. So what's happening, it's actually showing in the screen here, actually it's the same frequency. So the, the beginning and the end here are the same frequency. I can show you that the frequency, um, they're actually the same, right? Start and stop frequency is actually the same because it, it can do a, a zero span mode, right? Um, so it shows on the screen as if it was sweeping from the same frequency to itself, and then it resets at each millisecond, okay? So if I put this into 10 seconds, uh, sorry, well, not points, I want this one, 10 seconds, yep, you can see that it stabilizes already, right? Uh, let me put this to 100 megahertz, just for us to see more harmonics. 100 megahertz. Yep, there you go. So you can see already the harmonic period of this. And now it's stable. You see, it's really stable. But 10 seconds is going to reset at some point, right? So let me show you the max hold trace. So you see, at some point, it will um, get the disturbance, which is not desirable. You don't want that. Uh, you don't need a, a generator... Um, to vary its amplitude of being distorted or get any transient effect, right, while you're doing your measurements. So uh, what I'm going to do is, let me wait until we get one. Let's see. Um, I didn't I didn't decrease the RBW to the point that it's not catching, but it will happen. Okay, let me put it again down to uh, sweep. Let me put it a second. I put 10 seconds, maybe it stabilizes too much. Okay, there you go. There's, there's the spurious I was talking about. Let's see if we get it again. Okay, there we go, more spurious. 
Okay. So sporadically, randomly is going to happen. Um, so we don't want that. So what we can do when this analyzer allows us to do is to stabilize it to a very high time, a thousand seconds sweep time. So I'm not worried about sweep time because it's a single frequency. So no worries at all. Just put there 1k seconds, okay? And then look at that. Okay, we got this purist from before. Let me just clear that out. Okay. And that's it. Look at that. Where are the harmonics? I'm going to compare that to my holding force generator, bench generator. And uh, the CW in my holding force was the best CW I could generate in my lab before I got this guy. So let me show you. So we've got two markers. So MR, M1. MR is, you know, minus one and a half, right? I haven't uh, picked it. Let's see. I could uh, get it to the peak. Yep, it is in the peak. Um, so there you go. That's, you know, cable losses. We haven't compensated anything. And then here's the thing. Can you see that? Minus 47 almost, the delta. Minus 47 dBC. Can you imagine in a tracking gen that clean? All right, so let me freeze these, these trays here. So I'll just... Um, I'll just turn off the max hold for a second and I'll freeze this trace here. I'm sorry, um, let me get trace one. I'll freeze this trace here. Okay, it's frozen. All right, let me get to my Rory Force generator. So first I'm going to turn off the TG here. So beware, when you turn off and on, the sweep time resets, okay? Don't forget that if you're using skippy commands, SCPI commands, if you turn off the generator, you must input the skippy command to set the sweep time again. Don't forget that, okay? So here is the Rodin Schwartz generator that I have. So zero dBm, just as it was on the tracking gen. No modulation activated, RF is turned off right now. So let me get the cable. It's frozen. I'm going to activate trace two. So trace two, I'm not going to put max hold, I'm going to put no more and show it. So trace two, blue trace is updating. Let me get the rolling quartz cable. I'll show you in a minute that it's connected. Yep. Just connected it. So you can see here, yep. It goes all the way to the back there because uh, this guy doesn't have the the connectors in the in the front. All right, so uh, we got early force there. Let's see the blue the blue trace when I activate the output. Boom! Look at that, a bench generator. I'll give you a closer look on my generator, but look at this. Let me get M1 into trace two. M1 into trace two. I'll put MR also into trace two. Let me pick M1 and go to the second peak. Um, it's actually not getting to the peak. Let me see what's happening. Okay, I, I had actually put it into trace two. Now, yeah, now it's working. Now it's working. And MR picking again. So now everything is correct it's looking good so look at this of course there is also losses in the cable that cable is actually longer than the other one but uh, let's see the delta look at this so minus 34 35 ish dbc the delta so the generator i'm talking about is this one so you could see like it's a Rodin Schwartz SME03, it's quite old, right? But it still works fine. And it's within its spec, it's within its spec, um, the 34 um, dBC harmonics. But, and that's about it. So uh, let me freeze this trace.
I'll turn off the generator and I can have fun. I could show you the difference. Look at this. This is Rigel's and this is Rodin Schwartz. Standalone generator. Can you imagine that? Um, I'm going to unfreeze trace one just to show you that I can, I can control the amplitude. Um, let me disconnect the Rodin Schwartz from, from the analyzer. So I'm going to connect Rigel again. The, the, the Rigel's uh, tracking gen. So it's connected again. Let me show you here. Yep, connected again the tracking gen. Let me activate it again. And let me change frequency, let me control it. First, let me put the 1K second sweep time. Activating TG now, there it is. And now let's change frequency. Uh, I'm going to sweep it. Uh, let me actually put 200 megahertz. Okay, my SD card um, got uh, to its limits in storage. So I had to um, start again the video to show you the control of the TG, the frequency control and amplitude control. Um, so currently I've put full span of 6.2 gigahertz. You see the harmonics there. So it's pretty clean of spurious effects. So now I've already set the sweep to 1K second uh, sweep time. That's what we already discussed in this video. Let me put it 200 megahertz. Yep, 300 megahertz. 400 megahertz keeps going 500 megahertz and then a gigahertz let's go to gigahertz oh yeah now we have a larger harmonic let me put worst case one and a half gigahertz yep so uh, we get the worst case here let me get the difference so marker one is minus 2.3 dBm um, I don't know the frequency response of this cable I haven't compensated for it uh, it's not the point here, but the delta minus 28, 28 to 29 dBc, right? That's the worst case you're getting for harmonics on this tracking gen. Pretty neat, huh? For a budget analyzer, for the price point, this guy is awesome. Like the tracking gen of a, a budget analyzer right entry level entry level analyzer that's outstanding at least for me so that's what i wanted to show you on this video so basically you can control it actually you could change the amplitude i'm not gonna show you please believe me so you can uh, control it half a db i believe or one db at a time um in every frequency that it's capable of providing so that's the good news guys we've got a very complete analyzer which is very cheap for the price for, for analyzers right we're talking about bench top analyzers uh, there are durable that you can configure uh, for custom calibration kits in the VNA mode there's so many things that this guy can do I can only show you here um, modes so it has EMI with tech box control real-time analyzer 40 megahertz bandwidth VNA is awesome, so uh, there's a plenty of things. I'm planning to do a full review of this guy. So currently, that's what I have for now. If you like to know a good TG on the market, please uh, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos in this, in, in English. If you like English videos, please let me know in the comments below. And uh, see you in the next time.